What's up, everybody? Um, I'm back for our third installment of our Band Lab series. So in today's lesson, I'm going to continue working with my four, or one, one, five, six, four. I keep seeing the I and V and thinking I'm seeing four. One, five, six, four, four chord progression. And, and again, you're using your own progression as you're doing this um, uh, with inversions. We're now going to learn how to do arpeggios. So from class, what you might remember is that um, arpeggios is some sort of repeating pattern right um and and the fact that it's a repeating pattern allows it to again not take a whole lot of attention away from the vocalist but it still allows the music to to be a little bit interesting okay so we're going to do these steps we're going to open our projects we're going to duplicate the original track again so the same one you duplicated to make your inversions we're going to duplicate that again and now we're going to make an arpeggio so let's open our track in the mix editor and we can still see those beautiful inversions we did last class. Um, so again, I'm going to take my original four chords and I'm going to duplicate this track. Now, um, why am I doing it with the original four? Now, it's based on a hunch. I might also do it with the inverted chords, but I have found that I tend to like doing the, um, I tend to like arpeggiating the original chords more than the inversions. They tend to sound better, but I can't be sure until I try. So I'm gonna, I wanna try it. So I'm gonna rename this duplicate that I just made. I'm gonna rename this um, arpeggio four chords. So in order, and I'm gonna mute my inverted chords and unmute this one. The M stands for mute. So as always, we double click this to get the attention on it. And let's bring this up. I'm also gonna zoom out a little bit. All right, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is Remember how we zoomed in? We have our um, our grid size as a full bar from before. Well, if we're gonna bring up break up these notes and have it kind of move between them, we're gonna want our grid to be smaller. Or we wanna have, have it broken into pieces. Um, let's say eighths. I feel like eighths are pretty good. Um, the easiest probably fourths. I don't know if I would ever arpeggiate with just halves. So I'm gonna zoom in a little further right now all right the first thing you want to do with with an arpeggio is you want to figure out what your pattern is going to be so like so that's the that's like the most simple one right so let's try that one out and you can use a simple one like this if you want or you can try to be a little fancier i actually made another note over here i'm going to delete that real quick there you go. Now, while you can stray away from the notes in the chord, you want to make sure that they are the three most common notes in the chord. If you have a lot of the other ones, you could really screw you up. It's kind of like straying from the path. You can stray from a path. Um, but if you do it too much, like, you know, like if you're walking somewhere, but, you know, it, you, you could risk getting poison ivy or something worse. Um, but the, the better you know what you're doing, the more... Um, comfortable you're going to be uh, making those decisions. So if you're not feeling that adventurous or that comfortable, you're going to want to stick to to what you're used to, um, which is just going back and working these notes. So I'm going bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle. So this is pretty simple. So far. So let's scroll to the side. And then so it goes bottom, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle. And actually this time, so if I hold down control and shift, and this is on ah, this is on Windows. I'm not sure what the exact hotkeys are for oops. Just kidding. I'm, is it shift? Just kidding, not doing that. All right, <laughs> I'm going back and bringing all these to the small again. So bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle. All right. Um, zoom back in or out. Uh, and then let's go to the top and play out. that 
And now to get really fancy with it, I'm going to play that alongside my inverted chords. So I'm going to unmute those. tell why it's like such a popular chord progression it's it's so easy to come up with catchy melodies to it um so you see how the arpeggio kind of spices it up but doesn't take too much distraction so the key takeaway here is you can arpeggiate those original chords and it also won't be too distracting um let's let's do this i'm gonna i'm gonna mute the inverted chords and now unmute the original chords <laughs> See, now it gets a little bit more distracting. So I wouldn't necessarily ever really play the original chords all out. Um, the arpeggios are good. The inverted chords are good. Um, there's probably exceptions to that, but I, I'm, I'm telling you what I think tends to work the best. So so that's our, our brief video on how to do arpeggios. Um, feel free to keep watching. I'm going to actually make a second arpeggio. So if you, if you want to see a more advanced arpeggio, feel free to, to, to stay on. Um, Cool. So if you're still here, um, oh, wait, uh, you might have left already, but if you haven't left yet, um, I'm going to rename this project now. Um, arpeggios. Actually, I'm with inversions and arpeggios. I'm going to save it. Um, as MTR has muted tracks. Oh, interesting. Oh, okay. Apparently, I have to, you have to unmute your tracks in order to save it. Now I'm going to remute them, um, the and then take the screenshot and submit it. All right. So now you can go if you're if you don't want to see a more advanced arpeggio. If you do want to see a more advanced arpeggio, I'm going to start that now. So what I can do now is I'm going to duplicate this track, the original track again. So I'm still working with that one. I'm going to call this advanced arpeggio. I'm going to unmute it. I'm going to double click it. All right. So this time I'm going to use what's called passing tones. I'm going to still be using the, um, the one eighth grid, um, but I'm not going to restrict myself just to the notes in the chord. And actually just to save myself time, I think control a does work. So to control a to select all, and now I'm shorting them all to here. And again, I think most of you on, on uh, band lab are on Chromebook. So I don't know what the, what your um, exact hotkey is, but um, ask and I, I can look it up if you want. I'm, I'm assuming it's still control A. Um, so that allowed me to shorten all the notes together. All right, so um, they don't have to all be right next to each other. So, so this, so basically, if you count them out, I've got one with one, I've got two with three, I've got one with five, but each of these, the fours are on the way to between three and five. So they're passing tones. Um, in other words, they're kind of like, I was on my way there. So it's kind of as if, let's say I hadn't even put these in. So that could work. I'm just showing that I'm putting something along the way. And I could be fancy. I could throw another one here if I want. And then, actually, that sounds pretty nice. So I'm going to keep that. So I'm doing the one of the of the key, three, four, five, one, four, three. So I'm going to do that for each of these now. Now, keep in mind, you want to, oops, sorry. You want to make sure that you are in the key, you're staying in the key of the song, right? So since I'm in the key of C, it's all the white keys. So one, three, four, five, and then I have another one here. Right? Now 
唱这个。Let's see how that sounds with our inverted chords. Forgive my singing. Now you can even decide to change it up more if you want, but don't overdo it because you don't want to make it too distracting. If you change anything, number one, I suggest doing it either the third measure or the fourth measure, um, and only change like one or two. So see how this is going down. You could decide to have this go back up. It's kind of nice, right? Um, so I'm going to save my project. Um, so I have my advanced arpeggio. Um, oh, wait, I still have my other arpeggio in here. Was that on purpose? Oh, it's still letting me save. Okay, I guess I couldn't save before because everything is muted. You know if it's crazy? And I don't know if this is going to sound good. I'm just trying it. I'm going to I'm gonna unmute both arpeggios. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's way too busy. And I think I saw things peeking out. So I'm sorry if that got really loud for you. Mobby. All right. So that's that's all for now. Um, it's probably going to be another week or so before you have another one of these tutorials. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, your next one is going to be on rhythms. Um, so that's all for now. Silver out. Have a nice one.